This is Dr. Brendan Cronin from the Queensland Eye Institute, demonstrating corneal foreign body removal. These seven points are critical to follow to ensure you have a good safe technique and a comfortable patient for this procedure. As you can see here, there's a peripheral corneal foreign body that's quite metallic in nature. I'm using the needle and keeping it parallel to the eye to easily remove that little foreign body there. That had been in for a couple of days and so had rusted into the eye. A lot of these foreign bodies are sharp metal objects. It's important to have previously ruled out a penetrating injury in all of these patients. That would obviously be a significantly uh, more invasive procedure to have that removed and will often require a vitrectomy. You can see with all of these procedures, I'm using a needle that's just kept parallel to the eye with the patient fixating in the distance and the light is kept out of the pupil. It's important to caution all of these patients about the importance of safety eyewear to ensure they don't get a nastier injury next time. It's also important that the fornices are examined thoroughly and the upper lid is averted to ensure there's no hidden foreign body. People often ask me, what does the Sedell positive sign or the waterfall sign look like? And you can see that here. This isn't in a corneal foreign body situation. It's at the edge of a corneal graft, but I've instilled 2% fluorescein into the eye and you can see where that fluorescein is washing away because of the aqueous. I've put the cobalt blue filter on and it's very easy to see. That's a fairly rapid leak there. You can also see this a slightly distorted pupil and a shallow anterior chamber, which is also a sign of a penetrating injury. So not an exact foreign body situation, but a good demonstration of the high risk presentation to look for in one of these cases.